So <clears throat> I've got about 30,000 miles, I would think, on the car since I restored it. It's hard to tell because the odometers are not real accurate. <clears throat> but anyway, I was driving home from meeting up with some guys for lunch about two weeks ago and uh, cut through. Uh, and this was after going on a spirited drive the weekend before that, <laughs> which is really scary. So anyway, I'm, I'm driving home, just minding my own business, and uh, I go down a side street, went to turn into the side street, and it felt literally like, did you ever like being, been in a boat that's being towed by another boat, and they turn, and you're you just kind of like whip around and then go into the turn. Actually, almost like water skiing where you turn, the boat turns, and then you go around the corner. That's what it felt like. Well, it didn't take too long to figure out <clears throat> what happened. I'm not exactly sure why it happened, but I know what happened. The uh, This is the shaft that goes between the two universal joints. Or not, they're not really universal joints. They're these these rubber things here that uh, clamp onto the shaft to connect the steering. So anyway, the problem, this is the good side. This is the one that was on the, the top end by the steering column. And, and uh, you can see that there's marks in it here where the, it looks like the shaft had slid up out of the, out of the joint somehow. Uh, Cause that looks an awful lot like the quarter 20 bolt that, that they used to pinch the, the splines on this universal joint but this is anyway this is the good end and i guess it doesn't look that bad except for this this damage here so anyway here's the the bottom end that went into the joint on the steering rack and you can see it's, it's pretty well shot there's spots here where you know you can't even hardly barely feel this the spline so this must have been twisting inside the the joint and what that's what I was feeling when I was driving when I went to turn the car and it it turned but it it was very very sloppy so and then also on these things the 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 splines on there don't look that good I mean I'm not putting these things back on the car I, I decided I'm going to upgrade to uh, TR6 style metal universal joints they're just well they have a a, a quarter 20 bolt pinching the the spline on the shaft and the universal joint for the TR6 has a, a 5 16 diameter bolt so uh, I'm going to go with that plus I get rid of this rubber damn thing here so anyway I'm going to go ahead and start putting those in I have to source a couple of them and then um, I do have a good shaft so I, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and get it cleaned up and painted and ready to go in the car while I'm waiting for the TR6 style universal joints but anyway that's that was the problem. So here's a shot of the lower universal joint being test fitted onto the rack. And you can see that the spline on the, the rod that goes between the, the rack and the steering column is uh, quite a bit longer than it needs to be. In fact, it was actually touching the back of the uh, that universal joint there. So. Well, all I had to do is really, I cut about three-eighths of an inch off of the spline. And I'll show you here in a minute to where it still protrudes out of the the uh, the clamp area there. But uh, it allows the, you know, full articulation of the universal joint. So um, it was just a small thing. I ended up doing it on both ends and uh, had to make sure that I had the universal joints clocked 90 degrees out of phase with each other. And that by the time when I actually plug the uh, steering column portion into it, that the self-canceling little metal stamp thing on the steering column was in the right spot to to cancel the turn signals. But uh, yeah, so it wasn't that big of a deal to put these in. Here's the upper universal joint, and it's it's clocked. Uh, 90 degrees out of phase with uh, the bottom one and you can see the shaft I've cut this shaft off a little bit too so it just protrudes slightly out of the, the universal joint and I got my 5 16 bolts and lock washers on both ends so uh, it's it was weird because you 
well, you can't see it, but there's some paint rubbed off here where the, the well, I guess you can see some of the primer there. It was rubbed off from the rubber donut thing scraping on the side of the body. So, yeah, this, uh, this fits a lot better. And the steering is night and day. I mean, it must have been deteriorating for quite some time. If you can, it's kind of going down the shaft there, you can see. So, anyway, uh, it looks like this thing must, like I said, it must have been deteriorating for quite some time because uh, uh, I took it out for a drive here just the other day after I got all this put together. And uh, this uh, way, way better, you know, much more precise steering. So, uh, it must, like I said, it must have been slowly going out for a long time. So, hopefully, I won't have that problem with these these uh, TR6 universal joints and I know I think the TR6 you have to correct me if I'm wrong but I I think the TR6 has uh, the a, a universal joint in the bottom and a rubber donut at the top or maybe it's the other way around I, I don't know for sure but uh, I just went with both uh, the universal joints on both ends um, and I find that I mean it doesn't affect the the handling um, and you know there's tons of bumpy roads around here in Cincinnati and they're not real good about fixing potholes very well and um, so you know you're driving over a rough road and everything and I haven't noticed any kind of difference in the steering vibration or anything like that now I haven't taken it on the freeway yet but um, I'm pretty sure that the tires are balanced pretty well so I shouldn't have any problems there but anyway I think that'll take care of this thing, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll get back to more fun stuff besides doing things like this. That's it for now. Please like and subscribe.